The Evans Gambit is going to be a crucial part of our repertoire against e4, e5, and this is actually a quite old and traditional opening that was invented by an, uh, a Welsh uh, sea captain in the early 1800s. And uh, the reason why I really insist on uh, having this as part of our opening repertoire is actually a little bit of a broader concept, and that is none other than the fact that this opening is going to beautifully support one of the main ideas that I really like to teach chess alongside, which is that when the choice is given uh, to pick between material advantage or initiative and attack, we should almost always prefer the initiative and the attack. And this gambit is going to be one of the tools that I'm going to sort of use um, to reinforce that, whilst of course learning a very important and entirely sound opening that is actually quite popular even up to date. So without further ado, let's jump into uh, the ever so entertaining Evans Gambit, the variation that occurs after the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5 and b4. So the idea is, is that in comparison to the regular um, Giaco Piano where white plays c3, here we want to play an accelerated version of the Giaco Piano by chucking the pawn at black, inviting them to take, and upon capture, we would play then c3 with a tempo, allowing us to then play for d4 uh, even faster than under normal circumstances. At first, we are going to have a look at what happens if black actually rejects the gambit pawn and uh, goes back to b6. Now, this move is really not going to cause any problems to us, and uh, we are going to immediately jump on that bishop again with a4. Now, black has got two choices here. They can either go a6 or a5. a5 is probably the one that is uh, less likely to come. It's a bit weaker move. So we are going to have a look at this. We push into b5, knight d4, we take the knight. And now again, you can see that we are actually playing pawn c3 with a tempo without even having to sack a pawn. So this is... Uh, an absolute textbook case of win-win. We kept the pawn and we still played c3 with a tempo. And after the bishop goes back to b6, we play d4. And I actually call this off here because I didn't really want to overload you with unnecessary lines. White is already better simply because we are dominating the center. And we have got a very easy development indicated by the green arrows. We want a castle. The bishop is likely going to go to g5 to pin the knight on f6. And then we are going to uh, bring the knight to f3 via d2 and uh, then landing on f3, sometimes even to f1, g3. So that could be 